Both before and after Elizabeth, the Trust itself engaged in adjacent housing and industrial development. Their greatest coup, the establishment of the huge General Motors Holdens plant at Elizabeth South, was on land that was originally intended as a greenbelt between Salisbury and Elizabeth. Even earlier than that, the Trust began with exactly the type of tacked-on development frequently criticised in Australia. And while Elizabeth is often given credit as the beginning of northern urban development, the Salisbury North Estate is the proper place to begin this account. Not only was it the Trust's first development in the area, but many people have claimed with some justification that the Trust learned by its mistakes at Salisbury North, mistakes which it took care not to repeat at Elizabeth. Salisbury's transformation from a quiet town centre surrounded by hayfields and orange groves started with the construction of a large wartime munitions factory at Penfield, north of Salisbury, in 1940. This was followed by the erection of nearly 300 cabin homes at Salisbury to house the munitions workers. There was some local agitation at the time for trust housing too, but the trust was not swayed. Continued local pressure after the war and the expectation that employment in the area was likely to increase persuaded the Trust to include Salisbury in its country program. Twenty pairs of rental houses were originally planned, but as in other country centres such as Port Augusta and Wyala, sudden industrial expansion produced an equally rapid addition to the Trust's program. In 1947, a joint United Kingdom-Australia project was set up to build a testing range for rocket-propelled weapons at Woomera with the former munitions factory at Penfield converted for use as a laboratory and production area. The Long Range Weapons Establishment, later the Weapons Research Establishment, provided permanent and large employment, which was the type favoured by the Trust in its employment-related housing programs. In 1949, a large estate was proposed to be built on Trust land north of the Little Para River to serve the needs of the weapons establishment. Between 1950 and 1955, Housing Trust contractors completed 1,080 double units at Salisbury North. Preference in allocation, up to 75% of the houses, was given to the employees of the weapons establishment and to associated firms such as Ferry Aviation. As a result, many of the residents of the estate were British, but as many were on contract, they later returned to Britain or were transferred elsewhere. Thus the population at Salisbury North differed greatly from Salisbury residents in general. In 1954, 39% of the residents were British born, and in 1961, 31%. Turnover of tenants was as much as 10% per annum. The social differences were accentuated by the physical contrast between the established private residential area and the unfinished roads and the uniform appearance of the houses in the new estate. Apart from a few imported single units, all the houses were the usual red brick or Mount Gambia stone semi-detached pairs. Minor variations in plan or external treatment did little to reduce the overall monotony. The lack of sales houses also contributed to both physical and social uniformity. The Trust made only limited efforts to help with drainage and road making and to provide shopping or other community facilities. This was despite a survey by its own architects in 1959, which showed that the existing civic, commercial, educational and medical facilities of Salisbury were insufficient to meet the requirements of either the present or the proposed populations. Their report emphasised the need to expand services to meet the influx of residents to the new estate. For 500 new houses, at least six shops and about 20 acres of land for civic and recreational purposes should be provided. The Salisbury District Council lacked the finance and the expertise to provide the new services. When Mr Jack Borman became District Clerk in 1952, there were about 80 trust homes completed, as he recalled, without roads or services of any kind. There was no planning by Council, which was completely ignorant of the likely effects of the development, or of the Trust's intentions. For its part, the Trust had no intention of acting on its own architect's advice, let alone solving all the problems faced by either the Salisbury Council or the residents themselves. In the early years, with no public transport, 
Salisbury North residents had to travel by foot or car to Salisbury for all their shopping needs. The first local group of four shops was not built by the Trust until 1952. By then, the population of the estate was 2,900, which was greater than Salisbury proper. A larger group of Trust shops with surgeries, bank and rec collection offices was officially provided for in 1955. Travel of any kind in winter was hazardous because neither the roads nor the footpaths were sealed. The Progress Association was formed in 1951 and made numerous complaints on this issue, but until the Town Planning Act was changed in 1955, the Trust was not legally required to make or seal roads, and the Council simply could not. Sealing started about that time, just as trenching for sewerage began. Until 1953, residents had been required to bury their sewerage in their backyards. 